Beyond the Mic with Sean Dillon. Beyond the Mic with Sean Dillon. We're joined on the star line by a credit producer and fan of theater and the arts. You've seen his work in USA Weekly, Bravo, Showtime, MTV, VH1, among various other places. He's a Wizard of Oz historian. We welcome movie critic Ryan J. Hello. Ryan, let's go beyond the mic. The Academy Awards were expected to be everything, everywhere, all at once. <laughs> and it showed. It sure was. And it didn't end up being that way, right? I mean, that, that certainly won all the awards, 11 nominations, seven wins. Hopefully a lot of people have seen it. I think more people have seen that. That was sort of an in-the-middle movie. You know, it wasn't Avatar or Top Gun Maverick. And it on the other end, it wasn't The Banshees of Inna Sharon or some of the other movies that people hadn't seen that were nominated. So everything, everywhere, people certainly been buzzing about all award season long because it really swept award season with very minor exception. Michelle Yeoh as Best Actress, Ki Hui Kwan won, and we saw Jamie Lee Curtis winning quite a bit too. So it, yeah, that took the night. What was the winner, if there was one, that shocked you? Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. You know, I mean, it, she's not a minor award, but I think that Angela Bassett was really on track to win for many reasons. I mean, if you look at uh, Angela Bassett's career compared to Jamie Lee Curtis, because often Oscars aren't necessarily awarded for their current nomination. You know, that's what they're winning for. And that's what that goes down in history for. But I think voters take into consideration an entire career and Angela's and Jamie's, if you compare their careers and their resumes, Angela is clearly the winner. But at the same time, they're both totally award worthy as people, as actresses. And it was great to see Jamie, Jamie win. But I think that that was a very that was the one not necessarily safe bet. It's the Susan Lucci effect. <laughs> How has the film industry tried to survive the pandemic and have they? Uh, yeah, I guess that they survived streaming mostly. It, it's bouncing back now. If you ask theater owners, they're saying that there's the comeback. It still doesn't measure up compared to previous years completely, but certainly films like Top Gun Maverick and Avatar and some of the Marvel movies that are that are doing good box office prove that people are willing to go back to the theater. But I think that the pandemic rushed the future in a way, in the sense that we were expecting long term to see some theaters close and more movies to go directly to streaming. Certainly last year's Oscars when Coda won Best Picture, that was uh, from from a streaming network. That was a big, a big deal. Ryan, there's always someone left off the in memoriam segment that causes a stir every year. Any objections from this year from you? Not this year. There hasn't been much buzz about that, actually. Um, it, I thought Lenny Kravitz did a great job. The one thing that was really surprising and I, I kind of predicted and am sad to say I'm right about, I mean, the Oscars had a lot on the line. Their whole crisis team that Jimmy Kimmel had brought up in place. They were so reactionary and appropriately so to Will Smith's slap against Chris Rock last year that they had to basically make it a very smooth show this year. And they did. I mean, it was probably the best produced Oscars in decades because They've been really fumbling for so so much time, trying experimental things, trying ways to make it hipper or funny, jokes that failed, whether it was like bringing burgers or something to the audience or taking selfies or just cheesy things, you know? This didn't have any of that. It was a very classy, smooth show, but it also lacks that fun thing for us to talk about this morning. Movie critic Ryan Jay joins us beyond the mic. And Ryan, it's time for the Rocky Nade. Eight random questions answer with the first thing that comes to your mind. There is no pressure. If you had a vote, best film, if everything everywhere wasn't on the ballot. My favorite movie of the year wasn't even nominated in the best song category. It was Spirited, which was the musical on Apple TV Plus starring Ryan Reynolds and Will Smith. What was the first film you ever remember seeing? The Wizard of Oz. A to F, grade this year's Oscars. A. Best film other than The Wizard of Oz, in your opinion, of all time. The Greatest Showman. Cheating, but I'll allow it. I'm prepared for you for the next question. Best Broadway show, not named uh, Wicked or The Wiz. Oh, God. Oh, you got me there. Okay, okay, okay. Um, Boy, what is it? It's Ragtime. Your former Jerry Springer producer and another former Jerry Springer producer wants to know if you've ever a problem getting your guest inside the limo after the show. 
Yes. <laughs> yes. That's a simple answer. Did you ever sit in the audience for the Jenny Jones show? That I did not do the Springer show before though. What's the best thing about your pub cake Toto? Ah, oh, she is very well trained and she appears with me at events that we, that I, I host around the country at comic cons and universities and theaters and museums about the wizard of Oz. And she's a great co-host. It's time for one big question with movie critic, Ryan JB on the mic. Generations of great actors and actresses like Angela Lansbury, Ray Liotta, James Caan are leaving us. Who are the next great generation of actors and actresses? Gosh, I think it would be Nicole Kidman, Kate Blanchett. You know, um, it's Colin Farrell, certainly. I think this is the last night I saw the first of many upcoming nominations now that he's broken that seal. I hope to see Brendan Fraser work more regularly now too. Ryan, where can people find you? My website is ryanjreviews.com. He's a former Jerry Springer show producer who loves watching movies, has a dog named Toto, and thought the Oscars were really good this year. Ryan J, thanks for taking the time to talk with us today. John, thanks so much. And that, my friends, is the Beyond the Mic Shortcut. Shortcut.